Welcome back to the Back to the Future DVD commentary track for the fifth and final episode out of time. I'm Mike Stemley, designer. I'm Dennis Lennart, director. Becky Gammon, cinematic artist. Kirsten Kennedy, associate producer. Sean Finney, a marketing media producer. Varam Antonian, choreographer. Andy Hartzell, designer. Gray Rogers, concept artist. And here we are starting once again with Marty asleep, something I think we did about three times no, in this well, season. No, well, he needed to sleep. He had a very strenuous season. It's a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> and we put a speaker on this phone because we didn't want Marty to pick it up. Well, and because Emma would have invented a speaker phone, would he not? Here's a great piece of animation. Ah! Oh. Oh. Demonstrating conclusively that Citizen Brown is an evil bastard. <laughs> or at least negligent. Yeah. yeah, maybe you just didn't see him. That's right. Or, or there's a lot of deliberation on how much should it look like he was actually trying to kill him and how much should it just be... And that's true. Oh, sorry, At one I point actually, he was, he did head straight for him, didn't he? Yeah, before yeah. before we then you know, car skidded to the side. We originally were going to do a very involved sequence in the downtown area with Marty chasing this uh, static accumulator thingamabobby all over the place and getting pulled around like a... Um, what the hell? Uh, like a, a water skier. Yeah. And then we said, well, we probably should do that. And then there was a yeah. slightly less involved, and then there was an, no, an even less and A little involved. something. Because yeah. we wanted yeah. to put it all in this insanely right. cool set. Um, yeah, there's a lot of talk up front of, uh, are we going to are we going to put all the, the, the money in action in the expo, or are we going to do a lot of a, a big post-expo action sequence? And then we wound up just doing everything. <laughs> that we initially planned. <laughs> Much too. That was another song like by Ron Lytle, by the way, that I just talked over. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and again, Andy ended up being the lead designer on the episodes with the cool music instead of me. I'm kind of bummed about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Stanley trademark. Yeah. Oh, well. And this... I'm very happy with the name that uh, Alt Doc chose for uh, Marty here. It's a perfect 80s name. I approve of all references to a Red Scare. Yeah. <laughs> Yakko Smirnoff. Oh, you know, kind of uh, people love Jacques Duteau. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> this is Jared Emerson Johnson, I believe. I, 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 yeah. It is. Once it again. is indeed. Yeah. And then spoiler, yeah. He does a very good French accent. Jackson, as yeah. opposed to Mr. Lloyd, who is doing yeah. some kind of very strange Hungarian thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> a <laughs> vampire yeah. diver. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot what Duteau is from. <coughs> uh, something like... Actually, depending on how you pr pr pronounce it, it, it either means fish or it means shady. Shady, and, yes, and both right. of them work. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was just—I uh, thought the French translation was "sounds like Cousteau." No, <laughs> that, that was uh, also part of it. Yeah. We're very happy with it. Uh, Andy, would, uh, do you like to? And oh. would you like to talk about this yeah. house of glass thing? Yeah, the glass house puzzle was kind of a late addition to the to the design, and um, it, it began as a cardboard house that. Uh, <laughs> I was running around the office showing to people, and uh, um, it's a little different from, from, from some of the other puzzles that we've done, but it turned out really nice, largely, largely thanks to Eric Parsons, who's, who's not here uh, today. It's and, a very uh, puzzly puzzle. It is yes. a puzzly puzzle. Yes. And I remember, uh, I think it was initially, it was like, no, we're not doing it, and then you came in the next day with the cardboard mock-up, and then everyone saw it and were like... All right, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's part of a grand tradition here at Telltale for things that are going to make people hurt to build is to act for the designers to actually make mock-ups or uh, to make sure that they get done. Yeah, uh, and it maybe was a little more difficult thing. to build than people thought. Yeah, cue balls, uh, kind of small role, small but impactful role in this episode. Is that it? Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he got a little, uh, he hummed as he was walking off because Varum actually had that in the soup kitchen in episode one. And that, then, uh, and that was a huge part of that. And then it got okay. cut at the last minute. So we've been trying to find a place to put it in forever. And Varum was like, I think I can get into this one. Finally, yeah. I found a few seconds yeah. of a cue ball song <laughs> into the game. Uh, here, here Marty gets to be, gets to be kind of a badass again. 
I felt he really bad while I was solving this puzzle. Good. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to. <laughs> this is one of, my, one of my favorite puzzles. It's the do nothing puzzle. It totally fights every impulse everybody has. <laughs> the funnest of them all. Yes. Yeah. Stand there and watch. It's the, the go, make, go and make yourself a sandwich <laughs> puzzle. <Yeah. laughs> That was up. actually pretty sweet water effects coming off that. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that Peretta? Mike Peretta. That yeah. was Peretta. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Emma is so consistently adorable throughout the series. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a moment coming up here uh -huh. if it's in the video. Let's see. took that guy's wallet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody's yes. Favorite. And that yes. was, was Mike Brown that, that, that uh, no, no, I saw that I had all played through and saw it. Ever since episode one, I don't know why, it's like among like super Back to Future nerds, for some reason, the guy who says, I think he took his wallet three times in the second film is like the most funny <laughs> we've ever seen. Yes, and another that, thing we absolutely had to insert into the game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There were a couple like, of those in this episode. Let's cut all the puzzles in episode five, and it's just that line, as long as you get <laughs> That and a hoverboard, that was <laughs> and then uh, he stopped talking. The um, the uh, phone puzzle. We were real happy that we managed to get Marty doing a whole lot of uh, silly jokes. And you get a you will get a, I think a reward for doing all of them. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, but you will. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is nice. Watching AJ do uh, a bad um, Christopher Lloyd impersonation was hilarious. Although I think it was better. Than oh no! I it actually, it was so I, by bad, I don't mean that he did a terrible job, but that it's it's supposed to be kind of like the cheesy, right. the cheesy version. And well, uh, I well the day we when we went and recorded pickups, and he had to do a few more uh, of those lines, and we actually Christopher Lloyd was was there. We all had lunch, oh. and he was deathly afraid that yes. Christopher Lloyd was going to be standing there and listening to him do Christopher Lloyd but but uh, but he left just uh, just before so he didn't have to take the video on my that. phone for some of those and then he you know was doing all the voices and getting into it and doing all the sort of doc isms and then at one point looked up and saw me filming through the window and he's like this can never get out <laughs> <laughs> well it's in a video game now <laughs> yeah <laughs> to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. And Edna stands revealed as the speakeasy arsonist, probably surprising about three people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the three people who thought, oh no, they would never do anything yeah. that obvious. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but the fact that she was a pyromaniac was very surprising to me, actually. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I, thought we pre I thought we'd done a... Uh, a remarkably ham-fisted bit of uh, foreshadowing there in the first episode when she when old Edna talks about the pretty flames. We are we're, we're always less ham-fisted than we think we are. I think. Yeah. Come <laughs> on. He's gonna play the accordion here. Is uh, the little. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know he was a musician. Oh, Barham, final thoughts on uh, putting this environment together? I feel like we've the whole thing has gone by and you spent so much time on it. Yeah, it was definitely. Uh, biggest environment I think we've had in this whole game had, uh, uh, a lot of people working on it but uh, I think it uh, came together in the end uh, very well everybody's been pretty happy with it yeah I remember it going from the, the sort of problem area to all of a sudden everyone's like oh no no the expo is awesome like it just like QA everyone you'd ask their opinion and they were like oh I'm really worried about it and then a week later it's like oh no that's like super great it's the best part of the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh. cool <laughs> Give you a Although Kirsten kept threatening us. I didn't threaten. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Let's talk about the clock, Kirsten. <laughs> the clock, the clock is ticking, Dennis. The clock is definitely ticking. Papa never really understood the younger generation. Shots on the back and forth. On the back. Uh, on the back and forth with this. The, the yeah, yeah. I mean, this. I thought that this, this, this whole moment uh, turned into something really, really nice between these two characters. Yeah. We'd uh, kind of had been this sort of bubbling little C plot that had been sort of kicking along and meant was there in the first episode in voice only and then mentioned a little bit from that point forward and then we finally get a look, good look at him. And this, uh, the acting here is, is very nice, very kind of subtle. The, the little moment when Emmett suddenly realizes Papa loves me. <laughs> starts breaking out into Papa, can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> but it's not too sloppy. It's not too cinnamony. No. 
What, uh, how about sketching on this episode, Gray? Uh, yeah, this was actually uh, my first assignment here at uh, Telltale, so uh, they kind of threw me right into the fire uh, my very first day. They just said, oh, free concept artist, let's go, and uh, <laughs> Good luck. loaded me up with work, and uh, yeah. It's yeah, I think you jumped in and matched the style of the season incredibly yeah. well and well, quickly. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's all nice. pretty seamless. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, uh, and is it true that you, your first piece of art was the baby <laughs> Emmett oh, yeah. picture I, I from the, uh, <laughs> the baby Emmett photo from uh, <laughs> <laughs> the previous episode? But yeah, very first day. <laughs> we don't waste any time. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Jeff for adding that animation on it going kind of crazy and look like it's about to fall apart really <laughs> helps. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. this shot. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> I love it. It is remarkably yeah, still yeah, yeah, enough yeah. for them to make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. A uh, flying I, curve. I put this bit in at the end. I don't know if anyone knows it. And it's not on the video, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, You'll have to play. It was uh, sort of in the background as the doors are closing. You see the car starting to spin, spin out of control. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure right. if anyone saw that. Women yeah. drivers. No. <laughs> uh, so this is an epic moment that uh, Sean Ainsworth, who couldn't be here for the commentary, but uh, did an awesome job on, uh, which was one of the biggest kind of moments we knew going into this episode that was going to be scary, because it's also something like 16 minutes of cutscene, basically. Yeah. 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 But it's 16 (laughs) short minutes. Yeah, you know, they're eventful. There's some clicks. There's there's some clicks. There's a few clicks in there, yeah. So, oh, good. Yeah. So Alt Doc here is now uh, both fading out because his future is no longer exist, and he's been run over by a car, so he's dying simultaneously. But a two. But he (laughs) he goes happy. Because he knows that the real hill will end up having a nice happy. And then I remember, Mike. I remember giving you a hard time about the specific order of those events. (laughs) Oh yeah, it's kind (laughs) of important. Yeah. And then comes the moment that that is for Dennis. The central. We gotta. We gotta give Dennis the floor now. Yeah, it's just basically the whole uh, leading up to episode five for the longest time. I was just like, whatever happens, the moment where Emmett comes out, and we we gotta see his hair spiked. It's gotta be a silhouette, and you think it, it looks like Doc, and then he steps out in the light and clears smoke clears, and it's Emmett. It's sort of the origin story of Emmett's hair, and yeah. that. <laughs> It's my favorite. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> and I, the whole season we've kind of joked with each other that it was all about the hair. Alt Doc mm-hmm. has virtually no hair, and it's you know he's very tightly controlled. Oh. Young Emmett normally has pretty tight hair with little loose bits, Is it and then already? you know Emmett, who's oh, embraced his future, has crazy real Doc hair. Wild party. And it was a it was a, a great moment. I, I didn't even see it till just a few days before the the end of the process and it gave me goosebumps yeah. Yeah. looks like he's got some whites in there already too yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And again, aged uh, 10 years in the past <laughs> and, uh, five minutes Mike Pretta with the effects again to yeah. make that smoke effect yeah that came out smoke really nice. super awesome yeah. Yeah. really nice one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight oh great Scott that's <laughs> Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry. And then also I think uh, like Lazar and um, Bay Sound and Julian and <clears throat> Damien really uh, and Jared kind of making a lot of the sound effects in this stuff read really well. You know, so much of these little moments happen off screen or you know, you kind of see the, the lights flashing out of the high school and sort of getting the right balance of, you know, people sounding like they were amazed and now they're a bit horrified and something's kind of going wrong, but you don't know what. Like, yeah, there's an awful right. lot going on kind of yeah. simultaneously yeah. in this scene and, and keeping it all alive is a real feat. Lazar's recording us right now. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Lazar. <laughs> the waves, people can't hear the wave. <laughs> <laughs> Irreparable damage to something. Just something. And Marty trusting Emmett to keep a scrap of paper <laughs> for <laughs> fifty. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
somewhere we have a chart that maps out everything in perfect detail. <laughs> but the way AJ underplays this moment is uh, yeah. is priceless. Yes. And the way it's animated. Yeah. Marty expects it to happen. Yeah. He doesn't even Boy. think that it's it. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Yep. I love that shirt. Oh, yeah. And tie. the Adam shirt <laughs> or the Adam tie. Yeah. So yeah, good. I, I had done a few variations of this. We wanted to portray Doc as the kind of psychotic professor character. Uh, nice Hawaiian shirt and crazy tie. <laughs> It, uh, it ended up pretty nice. Well, I think my it's funny because I remember talking about like, oh man, science tie with like little oh, uh, yeah. protons and stuff, which was based off of uh, for the episode one launch. Um, <laughs> Mike had a Star Trek tie with faces on it, and I don't know why. <laughs> I was like, oh man, like Doc should have. Because this you're is why he's dressing up for a ceremony, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's yeah, 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 why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a. There's a backstory about getting Michael J. Fox, but we don't have time called, to we tell. We don't have it. Her time. <laughs> <laughs> too long. Basically, it was we were designing the fifth episode halfway through it, and Marking said, "We heard you're talking about trying to get Michael J. Fox for the fifth episode." We said, uh, "We were talking about that five months ago, and then we forgot about it." So we scrambled like crazy to you know find good places. We. And we were writing this really complicated idea, and then I went home, and my wife said, "Well, why don't you do this?" And we said, "Okay, that's a lot better, <laughs> and we'll just go with that." We probably would have gotten there anyway, but probably <laughs> saved about a week of us running around. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, I remember you coming in, yeah, and, and like having that idea, and we we're all like, "Oh man, that's perfect! You're a genius!" And you're like, "And no, I can't uh, take credit. speaking of Officer Parker, here it is, Officer Parker himself, our lawyer Mark Barbalak, who was largely You're responsible, responsible for, for our getting uh, like." Yeah, going through yeah. the whole process yeah. and uh, awesome. props to him yeah <laughs> did he do it as officer parker yeah i, I think so <laughs> i think he dressed in uniform and said you're coming with me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I like in the end have after we solved officer parker's problems again once again he's getting screwed over by, the, <clears throat> by the disappearing deloreans sad. <laughs> so sad this effect was great yeah uh-oh uh, this is the kind of the one we wanted, like the whole season, like you know, every ch- reality completely changing around you, yeah, right? Yeah. And well, it was the brainstorm of our our composer Jared Emerson Johnson to just cut the music mm-hmm. all together, yeah. and that was a a, a, a a great feat of scoring because it worked really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember him instant messaging me one day and be like, "Hey, so I put music in there, like you nope. said." And uh, I don't know, man. You should watch it without music. Wow. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And then I did because he, he was like, I, I did a version without music, and then we just watched it there, and I was like, oh, yeah, so much better. <laughs> and as someone who's lived in the uh, Sierra foothills for a good chunk of his life, I can attest that, yeah, that's pretty that's much it. what it looks like when there's <laughs> nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Juniper, is that what those things are? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and to give uh, Michael J. Fox a little bit of props, too, he... Uh, Super up for it. Um, like when he when he came into the studio, he was super good natured and uh, like you know had read through all the stuff we'd sent over and really liked the story. And he actually like I was telling you guys a comment and he's like, oh man, he's like the lines sound spot on. Like Back to the Future, there's nothing I want to change. Like, oh, well, that's perfect. And then he came in and gave us a nice little bit of uh, that uh, little bit of country country fried. country yeah country NorCal accent to the whole thing. Um, which is great for little, little uh, Willie McFly, all grown up. Uh, this time, at least he didn't pee on Marty. So. <laughs> at least not on screen. <laughs> I somehow feel this is right. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay then, let's go. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need words. Do yeah. it. Well done, Nod. Yeah. 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 Kent did all that stuff. Um, Ah, the cabin sequence. Yes. I this is the love sequence. the music. Yeah. This is the so point. good. Yeah. The kind of uh, uh, Disneyland uh, <laughs> going into <laughs> the Pirates of the Caribbean kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but even better. Yeah. Uh, I really wanted this moment. As soon as we saw the carved out DeLorean that um, Brian Gillies built, I was like, oh, man, you got to put grass there through the cl- flux capacitor, and then we got to have, like, Doc look up at it and, <laughs> and get sad. Yeah. And I think... 
it ended up taking a while. I don't know why to get everything all set up, but yeah, once it did, it's it's cool. Brian did an awesome job on this environment. It's beautiful. Uh. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here it is. Who does not love a crazy old lady? Actually, they, knew it they knew it would eventually all get back to crazy old Edna again. Yeah. Yeah. This was the sequence in the game that that underwent the most changes during the the game's development, and and for a while there was a whole sort of California Gothic Spider Baby sequence in which there was a, a, a mutant Don't Tana say mutant who lived. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And, uh, eventually, was changed into a completely different puzzle, but a better puzzle. Yeah, I know. I, I I think getting the chance to mess with Edna is actually pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My first variation of this costume for Edna, I took uh, Ryan Jones's original concept and uh, designed the costume around this, and decided I'd have some fun with her face, and uh, went pretty wacky with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember some <laughs> some of the stuff like yeah, your your first sort of pass of like all the different options, and I look at it and like almost threw up a bit in my mouth, and yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I like it. What about yeah, you? Everybody yeah. had an extreme <laughs> reaction to those Everyone to those sketches, was really nice. <laughs> and we went with it. <laughs> and she says she is terrifying. Yeah. She likes Girl fire. likes fire. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> she's a uh, pyro. She's a wild one. Yeah, <laughs> that can't smell good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, she's evil. <laughs> And then the read on that line from Christopher Lloyd we about over not being that passionate. passionate. <laughs> <laughs> like I died laughing. Yeah. Over it. Happened like this. What it did happen like this? Repressing you all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're a fool again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and now you're circle. a fool again. <laughs> <laughs> And, and everybody drinks on Hooligan, yay! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rebecca Schweitzer did not hold anything back yeah. in that role. <laughs> and another newspaper, because it's really important. Yay. Yeah, I think Drew almost... Uh, <laughs> we only did it to torture Drew. all the newspapers in this season. <laughs> I'm sure in the back it actually reads all work and no play. You set me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we definitely wanted to get out of this Willie character was a nice hero moment uh, rather than just being a guy who shows up in a truck and so we did spend a lot of time trying to go, okay, well, so what is he going to do here? Evil monkey point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law. Right? How does he know she never breaks the law? I guess okay, she yeah. goes out and talks yeah, to her. Yeah, he delivers stuff. This is your cutest skedaddle. Right. Much <laughs> obliged. <laughs> oh, God. Peace. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. <yo. laughs> and Becky said it won't matter yeah, anyway. Yeah, we'll turn over to Gray and Becky Brown. Yeah, this was the, uh, the first environment they had me just take over uh, sketched out all sides of this thing so it's good looking too. and yeah. out <laughs> and it was a, it was a challenge because it was an environment that had to be very specific in specific a lot of ways and spartan yeah, yeah. that painting cool. behind the bar oh yeah there is a uh, <laughs> Quite yeah. comely looking female. <laughs> yeah, a little hint of things to come. Just Megan. <laughs> Same question, Miss Pickford. Oh, nice. Oh, creepo. Oh, regard Tannen. Nice. Uh, of all the Tannens, I actually kind of like him the most. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of just, you kind of want to drink with him. I'm, I'm just trying to build a bar here, for God's sake. Probably the most successful and legit. <laughs> Tannen there is. Yeah, really the only one. That's true. <laughs> yeah. First lady. Of Everything. course, he's going to lose this bar sometime in the next <laughs> yeah. ten years, because it's not his by the time the third movie rolls around. Ah. Oh, that oh, was right. the effect that took seven hours to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why pickles? Though. Yeah. Because it's oh, funny. Why not? <laughs> there was so much pickle conversation. Pickles, the pickle barrel. Oh, you know, putting out a torch with whiskey is kind of dangerous. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Becky, thoughts on uh, showing or putting together the You know, uh, every time I framed a shot with Beauregard, I wanted to get that big um, horn boring. set uh, behind the bar. Uh, I wanted to get that right over his head. I knew those would come And it me. would show up, like, in so many shots. But, yeah, it was really fun. And then this thing. Nothing says yes. awesome like a hoverboard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that, was, that also was not part of the original design, but I don't remember how. It, I remember when when it occurred to we got to have a hoverboard in the sequence and running and telling Dennis. And then there's a hoverboard, yeah. and, and, I was like, and his, yeah, the pupils in his eyes just kind of dilated. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, spent a long time trying to get this puzzle right, and then we also realized we can't have two cars disappearing at the same time because our engine would like actually melt. So. <laughs> oh man, that was over really quick, but uh, Sean Ainsworth put in a lot of hard yeah, work. Yeah, the actual puzzle it's takes awesome a little longer than that. <laughs> Please know she hit the wall at 52 miles an hour. No, she's still alive. It's okay. Yeah. It's not like do not hit a wall at 52 miles an hour. Just don't hit a wall. The DeLoreans are amazing. The DeLoreans are stainless steel. Stainless steel which is why Doc chose it as a time machine. Yeah. So. But it's true all fan, true fan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know the, the time circuit uh, virus has slowly spread into the speedometer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe any anything it's reading. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. Ready to go. <laughs> this <laughs> this uh, moment kind of creeps me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because we know where yeah. they're heading. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and our what, goodbye to. We're still not Artie entirely sure why they were walking out of the courthouse in the middle of the night. <laughs> but. <laughs> what? Yeah. Marriage license stuff? Yeah. 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 Just finalizing yeah. the. Felt like the a little bureaucracy. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Filing. Red tape. <laughs> if you want to marry a Canadian, there's more hoops to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I've seen you naked. Don't do that. I'm really happy we got in, Marty, having more extra Freudian issues. Oh, <laughs> your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. And is this going to be our last sighting of Michael J. Fox? I liked how when we initially announced, saw, showed him a little, people a little clip of Michael J. Fox, they assumed, yes, we're only using him as this random McFly from the past. <laughs> it's like, yes, that's what we would do with Michael J. Fox if we got him. <laughs> As for you, stranger. And hopefully you've I'll beaten the games you before you start watching these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If not, stop now. Yeah. <laughs> Play them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there they go. <laughs> yep, more <laughs> generations. <laughs> Trixie's walk cycle. This, this part. This I, part love right here. I love it. I love it. That's. It's like she's walking the other line. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Hey, here we go. The finale of craziness with. Uh, 25 explanations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, we uh, got a lot of plot and Myas, No, it was great. Like, uh, I know when the idea was pitched, it seemed like a really fun way to end the series on the note that they ended the first film. Yeah. Um, I think it was a really cool, yeah. really cool thing. And um, <clears throat> we stuck Myas, who also did a lot of the opening stuff in episode one with the mall, who is our sort of counterpart, Back to the Future, huge nerd. Um, so we basically, I remember talking to him and going like, okay, so on episode five, you're helping out, right? And he's like, yep. And I'm like, cool. How would you like to do three future Michael J. Foxes <laughs> all for different messed up timelines? And he was like, yes, I'll do anything. <laughs> and he did an awesome job. Yeah. We ended up, as long as this ending was, and it's good for a wrap up of the season, we actually cut like about four other exchanges out of this. Yeah, that, four other characters, um, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we uh, had a whole bit uh, explaining, uh, yeah. talking about how Jennifer now has a punk haircut. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, Biff had a couple other lines, and then Dad, Marty's mom was in here, and we had to. Yeah, the only thing I missed about that was that I thought the idea was fun of Jen, like, you know, we we sort of gave him the the cool version of her in episode three, and you're like, oh man, she's almost kind of cooler than the, regular the one Jen. in the movie, and then it was gonna be a chance to sort of get her back to like a we've sort of like improved her a bit. No. Gives us something to that do. That still would have been kind of sad yeah, though because like, <laughs> she's yeah. different forever. She's basically not the same person. I would have been a little. Yeah. Of Hill Valley. You guys are shrugging. She's not that great. She's not that great. And here's what Marty went through all this for for this yeah. for, for a scrapbook. <laughs> I remember Myas really, uh, you know, like, we were always wondering what was going to be the reason, sort of how is it going to come together at the end. And when he started uh, working on this cutscene, him, I remember him contacting me and going like, "Oh man, like I really love the McFly book stuff. Like it's it's really heartwarming." Oh, thank God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
you for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Dr. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then this is the big, because uh, Brett actually consistently throughout the season, Brett Toasty, producer, said, Edna's got to have a happy ending, even though she's a crazy pyromaniac uh, potential fascist. We had. She <laughs> obviously reminds him of someone in his family. We don't want to go there. So we had to give her a happy ending, and there was only a few ways we could do it, and since we just figured, you know, we'll put her together with Kid. They do uh, sort of belong together. They sort they're, of belong together. They're kind of equally know. ruthless. Yeah. And they cancel each other out. further uh, torture uh, Biff. Yes, because... Yeah, well, yeah, the, the great thing is Edna now is Biff's stepmom. And in an alternate timeline... Edna turned Biff into a weird zombie guy. So, <laughs> ah, that's cool. I like that. I think Biff turns out a little better because of it. And hey, it's the end of the whole series. Or is it? Yep. Yep, it yeah, is. It's the whole end right. of the season. Yeah, it's it's oh, wait. Oh, some some <laughs> what happened? some There's cinematic artist snuck something in on us. <laughs> <laughs> it's another Delorean. We've got two already in the scene. What are you doing here? Wait, that's that's two Martys. Marty, you can't be here. Your younger self has already seen you. You. Oh, right. Bring him along too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, PG language. <laughs> okay, for those counting, that's three DeLoreans. Right, so Marty 2 is not as good a driver as Marty 1. The Tron, <laughs> Tron Marty. Tron Marty. <laughs> he didn't knock over a garbage can. That's, that's yeah, not bad. Yeah, hit a house. I don't know if that's better. Yeah. Didn't take it out, though. <laughs> How can there be two? A lot of neon in the future. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> It's the Blade Runner. <laughs> and, this, and this is where we decide to push everything completely <laughs> over the cliff. And if you notice, in the background, I snuck in a, a, a garbage can sound effect as if you just kicked it over when walking up. <laughs> just for good uh, yes. Mad Two belts. Mad 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 two belts. Mary's, yeah. Oh, yeah, two belts. The original version of this was going to have a robotic gun arm. But yeah. <laughs> we decided. It was my last desperate <laughs> attempt to get a robotic arm. We were really for that gun. We, we were with you until it was a robotic gun arm. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Which one's the real one? <laughs> if Marty just thinks really hard about not traveling time again, will all three of them disappear? Mm, I don't even I can't <laughs> fathom it. Probably. Yeah, what about my future and mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Oh. See, there's a message there. And what is that? What was the what was the final line in homage to? Oh, I've totally forgotten what the Mr. So, uh, So-and-so Thrill Me is an homage to some 80s movie, right? I believe so. Oh, now I can't remember. <laughs> it was obscure. Okay, and... Uh, oh, well, and that has been the uh, commentary for Back to the Future, Episode 5, Out of Time. Uh, stay tuned sometime in the future. You saw the To Be Continued on the credits. Who knows? Maybe it will be continued someday. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for watching.